The Fairy Nurse There was once a little farmer and his wife living near Kulsgaro. They had three children and my story happened while the youngest was a baby. The wife was a good wife enough, but her mind was all on her family and her farm and she hardly ever went to her knees without falling asleep. And she thought the time spent at the chapel was twice as long as it needed to be. So friends, she let her man and her two children go before her one day to mass while she called to consult a fairy man about a disorder one of her cows had. She was late at the chapel and was sorry all the day after, for her husband was in grief about it, and she was very fond of him. Late that night, he was awakened up by the cries of his children calling out, Mother! Mother! When he sat up and rubbed his eyes, there was no wife by his side, and when he asked the little ones what had become of their mother, they said they saw the room full of nice little men and women, dressed in white and red and green, and their mother in the middle of them, going out by the door as if she was walking in her sleep. Out he ran and searched everywhere around the house, but neither tail nor tiding did he get of her for many a day. Well, the poor man was miserable enough, for he was fond of his woman as she was of him. It used to bring the salt tears down his cheeks to see his poor children neglected and dirty, as they often were, and they'd be bad enough only for a kind neighbor that used to look in whenever she could spare time. The infant was away with a nurse. About six weeks after, just as he was going out to his work one morning, a neighbor that used to mind women when they were ill came up to him and kept step by step with him to the field and this is what she told him. Just as I was falling asleep last night, I heard a horse's tromp on the grass and a knock at the door. And there, when I came out, was a fine looking dark man mounted on a black horse. And he told me to get ready in all haste, for a lady was in great want of me. As soon as I put on my cloak and my things, he took me by the hand and I was sitting behind him before I felt myself stirring. Where are we going, sir? said I. You'll soon know, says he, and he drew his fingers across my eye, and not a ray could I see. I kept a tight grip on him, and I little knew whether he was going backwards or forward, for how long we were about it, till my hand was taken again, and I felt the ground underneath me. The fingers went the other way across my eyes, and there we were before a castle door, and in we went through a big hall, and great rooms all painted in fine green colors, with red and gold bands and ornaments, the finest carpets and chairs and tables and window curtains, and grand ladies and gentlemen walking about. At last we came to a bedroom with a beautiful lady in bed, with a fine bouncing board beside her. The lady clapped her hands, and in came the dark man and kissed her and the baby, and praised me and gave me a bottle of green ointment to rub the child all over. Well, the child I rubbed sure enough, but my right eye began to smart, and I put my finger and gave it a rub, and then stared, for never in all my life was I so frightened. The beautiful room was a big round cave with water oozing over the edges of the stones and through the clay, and the lady and the lord and the child wheezed, poverty-bitten creatures, nothing but skin and bone, and the rich dresses were old rags. I didn't let on that I found any difference, and after a bit said the dark man, Go before me to the great hall, and I will be with you in a few moments, and see you safe home. Well, just as I turned into the outside cave, who should I see watching near the door but poor Molly? She looked around all terrified, and says to me in a whisper, I am brought here to nurse the child of the king and queen of the fairies, but there is one chance of saving me. All the court will pass cross near the Temple Chambeau next Friday night on a visit to the fairies of the old Ross. If John can snatch me by the hand or cloak when I ride by and has courage not to let go his grip, I'll be safe. Here's the king. Don't open your mouth to answer. I saw what happened with the ointment. The dark man didn't once cast his eyes towards Molly, and he seemed to have no suspicion of me. When we came out, I looked about me, and where do you think we were but the dyke of Roth of Comgro? I was on the horse again, which was nothing but a big ragweed, and I was in dread of every minute I'd fall off. But nothing happened till I found myself in my own cabin. The king slipped five guineas into my hand as soon as I was on the ground, and thanked me and bade me good night. 
I hope I'll never see his face again. I got into bed and couldn't sleep for a long time, and when I examined my five guineas this morning that I left in the table drawer the last thing, I found five withered leaves of oak. Bad luck to the giver. Well, you may all think the fright and the joy and the grief the poor man was in when the woman finished her story. They left and they talked, but he didn't mind what they said till Friday night came when both were standing where the mountain road crossed the one going to Ross. There they stood looking towards the bridge of Thar in the dead of night with a little moonlight shining from over the Killick Darum. At last she gave a start. By this and by that, says she, here they come, bridles jingling and feathers tossing. He looked but could see nothing, and she stood trembling and her eyes wide open looking down the way of the ford of Balmacula. I see your wife, says she, riding on the outside, just so as to rub against us. We'll walk on quietly, as if we suspect nothing, and when we are passing, I'll give you a shove. If you don't do your duty then, woe be with you. Well, they walked on easy, and the poor hearts beating in both their breasts. And though he could see nothing, he heard a faint jingling and trampling and rustling, and at last he got the push that she promised. He spread out his arms, and there was his wife's waist within them, and he could see her plain. But such a hullabaloo rose as there was an earthquake, and he found himself surrounded by horrible-looking things, roaring at him and striving to pull his wife away. But he made the sign of the cross and bid them be gone in God's name, and held his wife as if it was iron his arms were made of. Bedad, in one moment everything was as silent as the grave, and the poor woman lying in a faint in the arms of her husband and her good neighbor. Well, all in good time she was minding her family and her business again, and I'll go ball after the fright she got, she spent more time on her knees in avoiding fairy men all the days of the week, and particularly on Sunday. It is hard to have anything to do with the good people without getting a mark from them. My brave nurse didn't escape no more than any other. She was one Thursday at the market of Ethcrothy, when what did she see walking among the tubes of butter but the dark man, very hungry looking and taking a scoop out of one tub and out of another. Oh, sir, says she, very foolish. I hope your lady is well, and the baby. Pretty well, thank you, says he, rather frightened like. How do I look in this new suit? says he, getting to one side of her. I can't see you plain at all, sir, says she. Well now, says he, getting round her back to the other side. Musha, indeed, sir, your coat looks no better than a withered dock leaf. Maybe then, says he, it will be different now, and he struck the eye next to him with a switch. Friends, she never saw a glimmer after with that one till the day of her death. The End